I'm going to apply the crackle medium to my birdhouse tote. What I want you to know is that I don't wet the brush. I like a bristle fan brush to apply it. I'm just going to take and apply a generous coat. I'm not wanting it to be running in gobs, but if you're cheap with your crackle, it's not going to work so nicely for you. And you want to make sure you get everywhere. It does not matter if I cross over an area that I have been before while applying the crackle. I'm going to put it on the roof as well. I'm going under my eaves. So I will apply it everywhere on here. Once I have a good coat, we're going to allow that to dry. We'll go ahead and we'll work on our leaves. I guess that doesn't matter for the crackle because you guys are just learning crackle with this video. So I apply the coat, get it everywhere. Now I'm working over top of a metallic color, so I have the metallic showing through. It doesn't matter. If you're going dark and putting a light paint on top or you're going light underneath and you want a dark crack, like just depends, whatever kind of crackles you want, that's what paint goes underneath. So if I want, this is gonna give me shiny crackles like this. So I'm going to have that look when I'm done. Okay, that's what we're doing to apply our crackle. So my crackle medium has dried and now I've, I'm going to be using a mix. So I have to make quite a bit of it so I don't run out in mid crackle. I'm going to take on my dry fan brush and I'm going to slip slap. So, which is applying my paint in a criss-cross motion. With this, we don't want to go back over areas that we've done. And I don't want to be cheap with the paint. You need to use enough paint. A thick coat of paint applied creates nice, there's a gob, creates nice wide crackles. Your crackles will appear in the direction that you pulled your paint. So I'm going to apply a coat like this. Now what happens with crackle is it's starting to crack underneath there even if I don't see it on top. So if I go back over there, I'm actually filling in my cracks. And I'm getting it all over the sides, which I don't want to do. On the edges here. And if for us on the tote, Cynthia reminded, it's a good idea to leave that till last so we can grab our handle. So I'm going to go ahead like this and apply all that. If I want my cracks to go bigger, as you can see, if Betty zooms in, you can see that it is starting to crack already. If I take my heat gun to it, or blow dryer, it will spread those cracks faster and wider. So if you're wanting to see your cracks happen quicker, you can dry it while it's, it's crackling. They will crackle regardless, even if I don't. As you can see, the roof has crackled already. So there, it's not like it's not going to happen. It is going to happen. They are going to crack. See how it's so, and you see that the cracks are going different directions opposed to all going straight up and down. And that's because I applied my paint in different directions. The paint direction you put the paint on is the direction your cracks will happen. So if you wanted to uh, apply it straight, the crackles will happen more in a straight fashion. There'll still be a few going sideways. If you wanted an old fashioned antique look, you can sponge it on, sponge your paint on. 
Uh, this is a little difficult to do that with, but uh, on a flat surface, you can do that and you'll get the look of an old crackled antique plate, that kind of look. So that's our tips for crackling. So I'm gonna continue to go ahead and do this and we just want to apply a generous coat of paint. That's the whole deal to it.